I'm going to kick it off here by thanking you all for being here. Uh, this is a really great opportunity to learn from the resources that we have in our amazing community and our amazing Alameda Chamber members, including John Ballard. Uh, for those who don't know, I think I know just about everybody here, but if you don't, my name is Heidi Betzine. I'm the President and CEO of the Lamita Chamber of Commerce, and we're really excited this year um, to be launching these health and wellness programs. So we have a health and wellness committee, and uh, that entails a number of members who have expertise in certain subject matters. And so we're bringing that forward to our community to help you all learn, uh, get educated, and be able to tap into the resources to get your questions answered in terms of things that matter to our health and wellness. Uh, health and wellness is important not only to us as individuals, obviously, but also to our community, our quality of life, and uh, to our workforce and the people who work in our businesses. So um, I'm so happy to see you all here. And I just wanna take a quick moment to recognize uh, board member, Jim Leadham. He is the owner of Home Health Depot here in Lita on PCH. Uh, he's there for all of your needs in terms of helping people with uh, mobility and uh, maybe even um, helping them through their restoration or, or care process if they have any ambulatory uh, uh, matters, Jim can help you out. Of course, we have members of our health and wellness committee, including of course, John Ballard, whom I will introduce shortly. Uh, Jim's, Jim Leadham is also on our health and wellness committee as well as Mary uh, Hornicle from the wellness company. And we have some other uh, members here on, on board, including uh, Shabby Shaw. So, Thank you all for being here and thank you, George Kivett. He's also uh, our local real estate uh, person here in Lamita. He's also a chamber member. So welcome. And if there's anybody I forgot, please forgive me. Sometimes it's challenging looking at you all in the little Brady Bunch tiles, but uh, I welcome each and every one of you for being here. Um, so just really quickly, uh, the chamber has a number of events. Like I said, we're doing these health and wellness programs on a monthly basis. Our next topic will have a fitness focus from the owner of Still Got It Fitness, Bruno Perone. Uh, he will be in April, and then we have some other events happening, including uh, from other members of our Health and Wellness Committee, uh, Adam Chiropractic and Wellness Center, I believe they will be presented in May, and uh, Mary from the Wellness Company in June. So stay tuned. All of the events are on Lameda Chamber's website, lamedachamber.org, and we do have other business networking opportunities. The end of this month, March 31st, we're putting on, it's going to be a really fun event. Uh, it is a local business trivia night. Uh, it will be still virtual until we can get together in some modified fashion, but I know that Ophelia over at Three Little Cupcakes and Bonnie over at Dr. Adams' office have been working really hard and coming up with a fun, fun agenda for March 31st. So again, all of that's on the Chamber website. Get on our mailing list if you're not on it, and we will keep you uh, informed of these great events that we're putting forward. And of course, every Sunday is our farmer's market, uh, 10 to 2 at City Hall. So Lots of great stuff going on, and it's not possible without our wonderful members and volunteers and members of our community. Uh, so with that, I know we've got some fun involved as well. So pay attention, because I think John has a little special something for you all. If you play the game, right, John? You got to That's attention. correct. Okay. So That's correct. Take notes. <laughs> I have to pay attention. I'm not going to give any clues out. There'll be uh, two questions at the end, and whoever answers those questions First, correctly, we'll win the $25 gift card to Target. Target, that is French. That is. <laughs> I used to work there for a few years. It's fancy. We, that's our affectionate name for it. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, John's already stolen the show so far, but I have to <laughs> obviously introduce him. He is uh, hosting this session today, and I encourage you all to put your questions in the chat so that you have a chance to get anything answered regarding Medicare. This is an educational session, um, and I also wanted to remind you that this is not only for you as individuals, but as well as if you have employees that uh, you're offering health care options for. It's just really good for everybody to know this uh, well-rounded information. So with that, I'm going to introduce John Ballard. Uh, his mission is to care, simplify, educate, and provide options for Medicare beneficiaries. John Ballard provides peace of mind with Medicare and Medi-Cal health plan coverage. He is an advisor that likes working with people. He is state certified, licensed, and local. He represents all the top California insurance providers keeping his clients with their primary physician and placing them into a Medicare or Medi-Cal plan that provides them with the best benefits. He teaches individuals and groups Medicare 101, which is what we're going to experience today, 
and he can answer your questions, help solve your problems, and help you get the plan coverages that you need. So if you do need individual coverage through Cover California, he can also help with that. And as far as employers are concerned, uh, John is here and it's his pleasure to assist you with providing your employees with a good group plan. And I know on Sunday when John was at the Health and Wellness Fair at the Farmer's Market here in Lomita, we were talking about how one size fits all is not how you should be looking at Medicare or Medi-Cal or a lot of your insurance options. So John's going to navigate us through that. John, you have uh, access to the slide. So let's welcome John and uh, again, put your questions in the chat. Go ahead, John. Oh, perfect, perfect. And just to piggyback on what Heidi said, uh, today's an educational event, so I am not um, allowed to talk about any specific plans or plan benefits. Um, and if everybody can put theirs on mute, what we'll do is I'll give the presentation, post your questions in the chat if you have anything that is personal to you. Um, we can discuss offline on telephone and I'll give you my contact information. Um, I, I just want to make sure that, uh, let's see here if I can progress this. Uh, this is my contact info and I'll post it again at the end, but uh, just know that we're, we, this is just a general overview and a real small one. My Medicare 101 usually is about 40 slides, but we can't even possibly do that in 15, 20 minutes. So, um, and away we go. So I'm Johnny Ballard, Insurance Solutions, my company. I do work with South Bay Health Insurance Services, and I, I'm also certified to put you into Covered California if you're not old enough for Medicare. Um, our Medicare 101, the introduction to it, we're going to go over the original fee for service. Medicare Supplemental Insurance, Medicare Advantage, a couple of the plans, and prescription drug coverage. What is Medicare? It's a federal health insurance program that is for people 65 or older. If you're not 65, if you have certain disabilities, you can get Medicare, or if you have end-stage renal disease. And this one is a new one for 2021, Prior to this year, if you had end-stage renal disease, you were not able to get Medicare. Um, Medicare is administered by the federal government and regulated by CMS, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. You can enroll through either the Social Security Administration or if you work for the railroad, through the Railroad Retirement Board. When do you sign up for Medicare? Three months before, you turn 65. You still can continue to work. You don't have to sign up for both parts. If you look at this Medicare card, it has the person's name and their Medicare number. They changed this. It used to be your social with a letter following it. And because of security and fraud, they've now changed it to a combination of letter number where it's very difficult for someone to uh, gain your information based on this number. It does show your Part A and your Part B when they become effective. And in this case, both were effective at the same time. Sometimes if you're still working, you don't have to sign up for Part B right away. So these dates may then be different. Basics of Medicare is there's Part A, hospital, Part B is medical, and then there's Part D. So to make it easy, a comes before B. Usually if something's wrong, you go to the hospital before you would see the doctor. And then you have to have uh, prescription drug coverage uh, included into your overall coverage. This is the basic three parts again. And on the right here where it shows what the parts cover, I could have Medicare 101 and go through this. And that probably right there is an hour conversation. Uh, part A covers inpatient hospitals, skilled nursing, home health care, Jim Leadham, and hospice and respite care. Uh, part B is your doctor visits, preventative services, diagnostic, some of the therapies, DME, and your ambulance. And then Part D is your prescription medications. So Part A in the hospital. Most people will get Part A if you work 40 quarters or 10 years full time and pay into Medicare. Once you do that, Part A will be free of charge for you. 
you'll just get that. If you don't work this amount, you can be charged as much as $471 in a year, in a monthly for part A by itself. So it's really important if you have worked the 40 quarters to go through social security and or a caveat, if your spouse worked that time and you did not work, say you were a stay at home mom, you could still qualify to get part A covered because your spouse worked that time. So that's a caveat. If you don't apply for part A when you're supposed to, you can be penalized, and unfortunately, Uncle Sam's unforgiving. Once they penalize you, they never take the penalty away. On your Part B, most people will pay $148.50 per month in 2021. That is an increase of $3.90 a month from last year's 2020 144.60. So everybody's going to pay the 148.50. Unless you have Medi-Cal, if you have Medi-Cal, the state of California will pay this 148.50 on your behalf, but everybody pays that 148.50. If you are a high income earner and you earned more than $88,000 up to 111,000, instead of paying 148.50, you would pay 207.90 and so on and so forth. As you increase in what you earned, that cost will inc monthly cost will increase respectively. And again, nobody can get away from paying Uncle Sam to have their Part B. So it will have to be paid. Um, the enrollment periods for Part B is what we call the birthday rule. There's seven months, three months before your birthday, the month of your birthday, and three months after. So that's the birthday rule, three months before, month of, and three months after. Now, that's your initial enrollment period. And when you have this, you can get what's called guaranteed issue. Nothing that you've had happen to you in the past would prevent you from being issued a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, general enrollment period is right now, January 1 through March 31, for your Part B. If you enrolled now, that would become effective July 1. Uh, there are special enrollment periods. If you had deferred due to your employer coverage, you could now, if that coverage ended, you can now enroll into the Part B to get your coverage. Um, you should sign up with your employer within eight months after that ends in order to get it, or you'll be paying that premium penalty, which we don't want to do because Uncle Sam will make you pay it for as long as you have Part B coverage. So there's a couple of different options here with Medicare. There's original fee for service, supplemental plans, Medicare Advantage, which everybody hears about, and prescription drugs. Hmm, that's a lot of stuff to remember, John, already. And we're only on slide 12. <laughs> Don't worry, this not, it's not really a long presentation today. With your original fee for service, that consists of your Part A and your Part B. You have to enroll in Part D as a supplemental to make original Medicare uh, become effective. So that allows you to go to any healthcare provider that accepts Medicare. It provides 80% of the coverage. You then pay the deductibles and uh, the other 20% that's not covered. Original Medicare will not cover prescription drugs and that's why you have to purchase that Medicare prescription drug plan Part D. Medicare supplement is that you have your original Medicare and you buy a supplemental plan. These are the basic five uh, health plans that provide supplemental plans. And there's private insurance companies. And what that will do is you have your original Medicare, but the supplement will cover your deductibles, co-insurance, co-payments, it does not work with Medicare Advantage plan. So if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, it is illegal to have a Medicare supplemental plan too. You can only have one or the other. You cannot have both at the same time. Um, and then there's standardized plans A through N. I won't really go into that can of worms because it will take a long time to get through that minutia. 
Medicare supplemental plans basically work by you having parts A and parts B and being at least 65. And it will allow you to see any healthcare provider that accepts Medicare. And remember that caveat, they have to accept Medicare. It's a guaranteed issue at the beginning. Um, and you need to enroll six months after receiving the Part B or within six months, I should say, of receiving Part B. Um, guaranteed issue if you enroll during the birthday rule. What's the birthday rule? Three months before, the month of, and three months after is the birthday rule. You also have special enrollment periods if you lose your health coverage from your employer, uh, if the Medicare Advantage plan moved out of the county, or if you've moved out of your plan service area, you can enroll into a Medicare supplemental plan. These are the plans that they cover, A through N. Again, we won't go into detail because I could spend forever just talking about this by itself. And again, we can talk one-on-one -on -one if you want to go into that detail. Uh, Medicare Advantage plans, also known as MA, Medicare Advantage, MAPD, Medicare Advantage, and Prescription Drug, or Part C. So before we did Part A, Part B, Part D, well, this is Part C. There's four parts to Medicare Advantage. Part C, I call it comprehensive because it includes A, B, and D, but you only pay the one cost of the 148.50 for Part B. These plans are owned by private insurance companies. Um, and there's three main types of Medicare Advantage plans. You guys are familiar with an HMO and a PPO and the freedoms and or not freedoms between the two. But there's also SMP, special needs plans for people that have chronic conditions, special needs, uh, high blood pressure, et cetera, or institutionalized. Um, there's specially designed plans that would really cover their medications uh, a lot better than normal Medicare Advantage plans. Again, we're going to show you the initial enrollment period is the birthday rule. So remember this here, three months before, the month of, oh, I'm sorry, the month of and three months after would allow you to be able to enroll. Now, it's very important, though, for you to start your enrollment here at the very beginning of your three months because you're dealing with the government. By the time they hit the bells and whistles, you'll be ready to go by your birthday month. If you wait, by the time you're ready to go, maybe after that, and you want to start your coverage during the first day of your birthday month in order to receive those benefits in that plan. Um, and these are the enrollment periods. A lot of people say open enrollment and they think October 15th to December 7th. Well, that's not true. It's actually the annual enrollment period where you can join, drop or switch. And once you do that, the coverage would be effective January 1 of the following year. The OEP, which is now between January 1, allows you to change plans one time during that or switch back to original Medicare and enroll in Part D only. And then you have a special enrollment periods where if your employer uh, quits their coverage um, or if you I've uh, signed up between eight months after or your Med MAPD, Medicare Advantage prescription drug plan leaves the service area, you move out of the plan service area or you gain or lose Medicaid, you can then re-enroll into a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, how do they work? Parts A and B are administrated through the insurance company. It'll give you all the parts uh, of A and B services, and you also get the rights of protection. So you have to use the provider's in-plan network because if you go outside of the network, you may be responsible for that entire bill from that doctor. So you want to stay in network. Um, generally, you must still pay your Part B, and some plans may pay part of, of the Part B costs for you. And very few plans are doing that. Um, but again, if you, you know, have questions about that, we can discuss one-on-one um, -on -one, uh, conversation. And as you see on the commercials with the Medicare Advantage, they offer always talk about giving you vision and hearing and dental, all of these other things, OTC, over-the-counter, PERS, Jim, what's PERS? 
PERS is to make it easy for you. Hey, I've fallen and I can't get up. One of those devices. So uh, those are usually offered with the majority of Medicare Advantage plans. How much coverage that each gives you vary from plan to plan and that is key. If you drive, you won't need transportation. If you don't drive, you will need transportation. So if you need transportation and they only provide six trips, that's not a very good plan. However, if you need it and they give you unlimited transportation, that's a good plan. So there, the differences are sometimes in what the benefits do pay out per plan of whether or not that plan is the right one for you. Here's a model of the HMO, it comes through Medicare, goes down to the private insurance companies and then the medical groups where you go see your PCP your specialist or go to the hospital. Your PPO, you know, when you go, you can self-refer to the specialist PCP. As long as they are enrolled in Medicare, you can go to that respective doctor. Um, to be eligible for them, you have to live in the plans area, be entitled to Medicare Part A and enrolled in Part B. So it's very important that you have both coverages, continue to pay your premium, and some plans charge you a monthly premium. Usually we try to place you into plans that uh, do not charge you monthly, but there are some that do. And again, in 2021, if you have ESRD, you can enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, which that wasn't allowed before. Um, you have Medicare prescription drug plans, also known as Part D, and they're available to everyone with Medicare and they're provided through either standalone PDPs, Medicare Advantage or other Medicare plans, or some unions and employers offer coverage with Medicare drug plans. PDP has enrollment periods two of the initial enrollment period seven months. That starts three months before the month of the eligibility. You have your annual enrollment period. They call it October 15th to December 7th. The open enrollment, oh, I'm sorry, the open enrollment period is now January 1 through March 31, and where you can also disenroll and return back to original Medicare and purchase a PDP plan. Um, there are special enrollment situations if the plan leaves the county, you lost your employer group coverage or your plan moves out of the service area. And again, there's gonna be a late enrollment penalty, Uncle Sam will assess if you do not enroll into Part D. So you wanna make sure that you do it because they will pay, make you pay the penalty as long as you're enrolled in the drug plan. And uh, that's not something that you want to have happen. That's my presentation in a nutshell. I want to make it short and sweet because I know you're gonna have a bunch of questions and I'd rather focus my time on answering your questions. So let's open the, the chat box, Heidi, and sure. take it from there. Holy moly. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot my two questions. Oh, uh -oh. Okay, These are the most important for all the goodies. Okay, who knows how much you pay for part B? $148.50 per month. That sounds like Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This one has your name on it. And then the second is, what's the birthday rule? I know that answer too, but I'll give somebody else. Okay. A Anyone I'm birthday rule? Three months before, month of, and three months after. Nice, Steve. Excellent. Okay, let me put your name on here while I'm looking at it just to make sure that I can make sure you receive this and I'll get your information from Heidi uh, to get that over to you and Bonnie, I'll take care of you too. Thank you guys. Uh, I really appreciate being able to give you guys this, this little heads up. Uh, let's look at some of your questions. Um, Heidi, I don't know how to. Sure. Get to I got, I'll take care of it. And, and by the way, guys, you all deserve kudos. You were paying attention to writing notes. I'm super impressed. I, I teased <laughs> this event and I said, well, I don't think there's going to be a quiz. It's Medicare 101, bringing back like college days, but we had a quiz and you guys passed. So congratulations. There we go. 
Uh, we do have, I know Steve asked, you know, when do you need to apply and um, when do you need to apply and how and what the costs are involved? Um, maybe we could just do a, just a really quick recap just to cinch okay. it. When do you need to apply, how, and what are the costs involved? Okay, so if you are turning 65 and you are on Social Security, they will issue you automatically your Medicare card about two and a half months before your birthday month. If you're not on Social Security and you're still working, you need to only apply for Medicare Part A and you will not need to apply for B. And here's the reason why. If you're working and you have an employer plan, you're paying a premium out of your paycheck for that plan. If you enroll in Part B, you then would also pay the 148.50. So that's like paying twice for insurance coverage. Um, so you will not need to pay for your Part B until that employer coverage ends. So let's say, for example, if that was going to end in December of this year, you would contact um, Medicare, Social Security, uh, probably in about October-ish to say, hey, January 1, I need to make my part be effective. And then that would turn on in January and you would be able to then get you a Medicare Advantage plan while the open annual enrollment period was available. So it would also start January 1. Does that make sense? Anybody? Okay. Did I answer what you were looking for? I can't. See, I don't know who asked the question. That honey. was Steve Moyer. Steve, okay. Uh, I can't see him. Steve, did I answer that for you? Your mute's on, so I can't hear you. Okay. Um, okay. Yes, 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 yes. He says in the chat. Thank you. Steve. All right. We got gotcha. you. <laughs> the other question we had for you, John, uh, from Jim Leadham was, does the supplemental insurance cover the drug coverage donut, in quotes, where your costs are astronomical until the donut ends? Okay, so let's make sure that we're talking apples and apples. When you're on a supplemental plan, it's a completely different than a Medicare Advantage plan. It's a different animal. So what happens is you have your Part A, your Part B, you purchase a Medicare supplemental plan and you also purchase a Medicare drug plan. So you pay Part B, the Medicare insurance plan and the Medicare drug. So Medicare supplemental is probably about like 225-ish or thereabouts. Part B is 140.50 and then your Part B is probably around 25-ish dollars. So you'd pay all that monthly. However, the beauty of that, and I'll tell you a story from my own experience, my father-in-law has Medicare supplemental plan. He was up in Mammoth and had a heart problem. So they transported him via helicopter from there to Stanford. He received two surgeries from one of the top doctors in the area. He paid zero dollars for all the helicopter for the doctors for everything followed up because the supplemental take and they'll get payment from the a and b and then they pay everything else so the supplementals really cover there's no true donut hole because it, that's an unlimited coverage whereas a medicare advantage plan would take you into a donut hole situation is that kind of help you understand that process? <laughs> okay. Okay. So we, we'll talk afterwards to uh, maybe I confuse you by what I said or which part's still not clear, Jim? You're on mute. Uh, I think the drug plan uh either it is separate from the supplemental or because the drug plan I have was supposed to be less than what it cost, what the drugs cost me before I was 65 and there ended up costing me more because as soon as you hit that donut, which happened somewhere around March or April and lasts until September, October, my drug costs are astronomical for that four or five months in between and then they drop back down again. 
that's the donut hole we're talking okay. about. Okay. Okay. So are you talking about you have a Medicare supplemental drug plan? Yes. Or, or a Medicare Advantage plan? I do not have Medicare Advantage. I have uh, supplemental. Uh, Medicare supplemental and the okay. drug plan. Okay. Okay. So I again, I can't go into plan specific because this is an educational event. So I'll need to talk to you one-on-one -on -one to talk about the specifics of the plan you have and how it works. That would be super. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Okay, John, we have a couple other questions. Um, number one is, uh, uh, coming from Shabby Shot State Farm, uh, what about somebody who is older than 65? In which respect of? Shabby, if you want to unmute yourself to clarify your question, that might help. Shabby, can you unmute yourself? If not, just expand in the chat. And then we'll move on to the next question. We'll come okay. back to you, Shabby, if we can. So the second question that Steve had was uh, repeating the cost of A, B, and D. Maybe you want to go back to that slide. Here. Okay, sure. Um, let me see how I can do that. A, B, and D. So your part A would be free if you work the 40 quarters um, and or 10 quarters or 40 uh, how am I say 10 years or 40 quarters? I'm trying to think backwards here. Let me go back to the beginning. Your part B is going to be 148.50 per month. So let's go here where we were. Part A is going to be your free if you work 40 quarters or 10 years. If you don't work that much, you could pay as much as 140 or $471. Now, it, it's kind of um, a slighted scale based on how many months you actually work, what they're going to charge. So I don't have that slide to provide to you. On your supplemental plans, generally your Medicare supplemental plan would run you anywhere. It could be from, say, 150 to, I don't know, 275 ish it depends on the plan, the month, uh, or your actual age because they age band and they continue to increase as you get older. And then your drug plan is usually about, uh, I wanna say 20 or $30 a month uh, on a general basis. Again, you know, we can look at plan specific, but I can't talk about that in this um, educational event. Did that answer what you were asking? Yes. Okay, thank you. So John, um, Steve also would ask if uh, the slides would be available. I know we'll have a recording of this on the Chamber's website, but um, is that something you would be uh, amenable to is sharing the slides uh, to those who might be interested? Yes, I already, you know, our industry is so regulated I had to get the presentation approved prior to being able to even let you eyeball it so yes it's it's um, since we've recorded it and you can have access to that uh, individual information and or contact me and I can give you you know specifics on your situation um, because that then would not be an educational event. That's a one-on-one -on -one consultation, which I provide at no charge. So John, we, we put your contact information in the chat and um, okay. and uh, if anybody would like a copy of the slides or would like to be put on um, uh, put in touch with John, just go ahead and say yes in the chat and I'll connect you. Um, yeah. But I had a question for you, John. Okay, um, like this guy. You know, I saw um, that you that there was some coverage on, on one of the maybe supplemental plans uh, that seemed to be uh, covering gym membership. So that to me starts to ring a, a bell, like preventative care, right? Or I'll say maintenance. <laughs> okay. And so, are you seeing any potential change down the road, or are there coverages available that do address things like preventative care? Let's say 
um, whether that's, I don't know if supplements is the right word, but even seeing, let's say, chiropractic or other kinds of wellness professionals, it, are you seeing that start to shift? Because I know some insurance plans, generally speaking, actually do cover chiropractic. So are you seeing that with the Medicare? Okay. So just to be clear, we're, we're talking about actual benefits of plans. So let me go down here to this slide. I didn't include everything. A lot of the plans do include chiropractic, acupuncture. Um, there's an uh, extensive list, and they vary from plan to plan. Some plans may give you zero chiropractic. Some may give you unlimited chiropractic. It all depends on the actual plan. As far as the um, gym memberships, the majority of them have been closed down, so they've been offering the Zoom classes, etc. However, as now we changed into the red for our area, things will start to open up and plans do offer that. And what is offered differs plan to plan. So, you know, if you have a particular plan, we can talk about that. And this is one of the things that I really maybe want to emphasize with everybody on this call, whether it's for you or for your friends, a lot of times they don't know all of the benefits that they are available to them. And benefits are the insurance company pays money so you can have these things. If you're not aware that you can have them, you don't use them. And so what we do is a benefit review. We have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. We talk about your plans and everything that it offers, including dollars and cents, how much that they offer on the respective benefits. And a lot of times, especially when you're talking about over the counter, if you have a plan that's offering you $125 a quarter on over the counter and what's over the counter, you go to the grocery store, you have where you can buy the groceries, you have the pharmacy, right outside the pharmacy, there's toothpaste, mouthwash, incontinent supplies, that's over the counter, meaning the insurance companies in some cases would give you $125 a quarter to purchase those items instead of you paying for those items out of your pocket. So that's really money in your pocket, but if you're not aware that you have that coming to you, it's not used. So and that's why we do a benefit review to kind of enlighten people about what they have coming to them that they aren't even aware of. Did that answer what you're asking? I am just, I'm sorry. I'm, I don't have to pretend a day or it's only Wednesday, right? I am ready just to call and say, I, I have no idea what to do. It, it, I feel like you have this matrix in your office that has all the different options. And that's why it's like mission control. He's got that headset on you guys with the microphone. He's like NASA navigating Medicare. There we go. Uh, John Asako has a question. He wants you to talk about the PERS program, P-E-R-S, right? I'm following okay. the it up and its cost. Okay, so again, based on the plan, some plans charge you to have the personal emergency response system. Some plans would will not charge you if you have it just in your home. If you want a coverage that you can have it on your neck, go outside of your home and be covered, some plans charge you for that because it's done through the system whereas other plans don't charge you anything to have that same thing. So it just depends on what plan you're with, what they're going to charge you for the PERS. Um, I always, for my clients that are older and on their own or their children work and they're there at home during the day, um, I always recommend for them to get that because it's something you have to call into the plan and ask them to give you. They're not just going to send it to you. Once you receive it, you have to activate it so that it will work. Um, I had a lady, and believe me, two years I talked to her about getting that. And she finally said, okay. One month after she got it, she's doing her gardening in the yard. She lives in the valley, Sunland. Fell down, broke her elbow, couldn't get up. She lives alone, but she had her device on called somebody and instead of her perishing because it temperature rose significantly, they came and assisted her and got her and she took her to the hospital. So 
She then called me to tell me what happened and how glad she is I finally convinced her. But hopefully it doesn't take two years for me to convince you that you need to have that if it's available to you. I wonder then, so I'm wearing an Apple Watch and it okay. has a setting. Does that qualify under the emergency response? Because it actually does have a setting where if you fall or something, it, it actually will call, I think it, it can call 911. Okay, some of the devices like that are advanced um, enough to be able to do that. That doesn't necessarily make it a personal emergency response system. It, it in essence, functions in from what you said, sort of like that. This one's more like you touch the button, somebody says, hey, are you okay? Or a lot of them are um, false sensitive, meaning that if you fell down and they see on their monitors uh, jarring sensation, because that's what would happen and in, in, in appear on their monitors, they would then call you and say, hey, is everything okay? Uh, we see you know, that you've fallen. So I think the PERS are a little bit more personal and intricate than what's on the Apple Watch. You've got a live person actually engaging with you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, that sounds nice. I just like that for just every day, just to check. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, <laughs> um, I had a, a gentleman that had his uh, device on and he was out and about and didn't know where he was. Called in, they called his son and his son came and got him. He described, you know, buildings around where he was at and his son figured out how to find him and, and got him. So, you know, those, man, I, I, I like to have, I like to tell people if they can get them, get them. That's great. So Shabby, if you can hear us, uh, if you had any more expansion on your question, just let us know in the chat. Um, John, is there sort of a, a, a rule of thumb before we start to wrap up for final questions here? Um, for how often you should be talking to somebody like yourself and looking at your plans. I mean, obviously, if there's a significant change where you're outside of the service area or your employer changes, but what else should we kind of keep in mind as a rule of thumb if we're helping either ourselves, our employees, or our family members? Um, well, what you can do is because plans change from year to year, it's good to get an annual um, benefit review to see what's coming up for the prior year. We don't get access to that until October 1. And there's that that date is kind of set in stone. They don't allow us to see what it is until that date because they don't want us talking about what's coming up to lure people to respective plans. So they kind of restrict that, but once we get that and we can talk about it to our existing clients, then we can tell them, you know, hey, for the next year, your benef this benefit went up or this benefit went down or this benefit went away or they added this benefit. It just depends on the plan and what's happening with that plan, if that makes sense. Stay tuned till October. <laughs> <laughs> but yearly is a good rule of thumb to, you know, double checked and see what you have and how it works. Wow. Well, I can see that um, your expertise is definitely needed and uh, they made it, um, I think, challenging. Uh, it's new oh, to yeah. me, but it's very insightful. And, and I appreciate, um, John, you're, you're taking the time to make this available to, to the folks here and for the people who will be watching this recording. Do we have any final questions for John before we uh, wrap up? If you want to unmute yourself, you're welcome to just to say a few words, just so we're not so chatty. <laughs> Thanks, John. Oh, you're welcome, man. Anytime. Good job, John. That was Thank very you. comprehensive. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully it wasn't too much TMI. <laughs> TMI can empower us sometimes. Knowledge yes, is yes, right? yes. Dental yes. and I, Steve Moyer says. <laughs> All right. Gentle and I, I think that's a question. So helpful. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Alicia. Thank you. So I think that's a question. Yeah, that's a question. How does it fit into the plan or not? And is it extra? Dental it, and I. Dental and which? I. Okay. So vision. vision, you're talking about vision and dental? Yes. Most of the plans offer that, but again, based on the particular plan, sometimes you get more with one plan than you get with another plan of either. 
So it just depends on what plan that you're in. Um, but when we do your, your benefits analysis, so let's say, for example, you want to talk with me uh, next week about your sp specific plan and what it covers and those benefits. We can go through all of those numbers so that you know what it does cover specifically. And I can, because I have a uh, matrix, I represent not just one plan, I represent 18 different uh, Medicare plans. And what's the difference? When you're seeing these commercials on the TV that say we have vision, dental, et cetera, you call into their number, you're calling into a specific plan. And so that plan has its plans within the plan it finds which plan then is right for you in that plan and puts you into that plan. When you have 18 plans, you can look at that and say, well, across the board, I can see based on your needs, much like I told Heidi, it's if you wear a size seven shoe, you don't buy a size eight and a half, it won't fit. So with Medicare plans, we need to look at the individual and see specifically what are your needs and then we find the plan that matches those needs the best out of the 18, not just at the one, but out of the 18 to see which one is the right one for you that gives you what you need. Again, if you don't need transportation, one that offered you unlimited transportation, you wouldn't care to, about that. If you didn't drive, that would be really important. So it just depends on your needs. Thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you. I, I just didn't know how the cost might be changed as well, you know. They, they do change, and if you'd like, just contact me, and we can talk about your plan and what you have available for you um, to know what benefit that you get. Great. Thank you. You got it. And, John, this consultation is no obligation, right? It's just a chance to sit down and talk about your specific situation and get some questions answered and, and then go from there, correct? Absolutely. I, I do not charge for my consultation. I provide you with educational information. What you do with it, you do. If you want to work with me to, hey, there's another plan out there that may be better, um, it all depends on the time of year. Like right this moment... We still have until the end of this month, if you were in a Medicare Advantage plan, to place you in a different plan if you wanted to change, one that gave you what you're really looking for, as opposed to the one that you're in that doesn't give you what you're looking for. Um, otherwise, if it's not the right time of year, we can't make the change until essentially October, and that would be for January 1 of the following year. Okay, so I don't charge and I also just am giving you the education so you know what you have available to you um, just so that you're aware of, of what you can have. Well, and this is helpful too, just to start getting the mind thinking like, oh, I haven't even thought about this before. It just sparks something to, to prompt the conversation. So yes. Um, so I don't see any further questions. Um, uh, I just want to let you all know that those who have expressed interest in receiving the slides, we will get those to you. Uh, we have your contact information. I put John's information in the chat as well. Here it is up on the screen again. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much, John, for uh, giving us this primer and this overview. <laughs> To a very, uh, I'll say, complicated or lots of roads twisted oh, man. navigation process. So please do reach out to John yes, as a resource in our community. And big round of applause, virtual hand clap, the golf clap for John. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> that from DeSaco there, that's good. Did lead him. So uh, <laughs> and we appreciate all of you for being here on this call. Again, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to the chamber, contact John with questions directly, and we will connect you as well. And go to the chamber website, lavinachamber.org for future events like this. Our next health and wellness event will be April 21st. Same time, uh, same bat channel, 1230. Again, we'll be focusing on fitness uh, with the owner of Still Got It Fitness here in Lamita. And uh, more of our events are posted. Uh, so we do hope to see you again at a future session. And thank you all for being here. We're going to end the call, and then John, you and I will hang out in the chat room and just have a little debrief. Does that sound? Oh, good? That, that sounds excellent for everybody. Uh, we can go down this Medicare road right here and get you to where out of the forest. It looks very good, <laughs> but that's only because you're helping us, right? Exactly. We have to go together. <laughs> All right.
All right. Everybody have a great day. All right. Reach out to the chamber. Thank you, Thank you all for being here. Thank you guys. Thank you, Appreciate it.